No. Yeah. Hi, I'm Kim Harrington, and I'm the pastor of St. Paul Believers Fellowship. We want to kick off a new series of teachings that we call our Bible Institute. When we first entered the ministry in 1977, it's been a while, uh, we started a Bible Institute at our first church. We started a Bible Institute in New Delhi, India. And as long as we've been in our present location, about 30 years now, we have uh, had a Bible Institute going in, in this in St. Paul Believers Fellowship. It's a wonderful way to learn the Word. Just go through a book of the Bible or, or a subject sometimes of the Bible and cover it systematically. You don't just get a little squirt, squirt, squirt like you get from a sermon on Sunday morning. You get a, a saturation of the Word of God. We want to look at uh, the book of Ephesians starting today. It's going to take a little time. They're just going to be short, bite-sized teachings. It's going to take us four small lessons to get through chapter 1. So uh, I'm going to get hopping on it right now. The Bible says in Ephesians 1, 1 and 2, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, to the saints who are in Ephesus and faithful in Christ Jesus, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Ephesians is thought to be one of the greatest, grandest, uh, most sublime, if you will, of all of Paul's writings. He takes us into the heavenlies. He talks about spiritual warfare. He just, uh, it's just beyond this world kind of. And uh, it's not as personal as some of his letters. Uh, when he writes the Philippians, he's clearly writing people that he knows well and loves. And um, Corinthians, he's got all kinds of personal exhortations about the various trouble that is going on there. And Ephesians, it's a little bit more doctrinal. It's, it's not quite as personal. He doesn't have the usual greetings at the end or as Tychicus says hi to so-and-so. It's just a little bit more uh, doctrinal. It was written, it was addressed to the Ephesians, but it was meant to be a circular letter. There, the, the church at Ephesus had thousands of members. Uh, Ephesus itself was the third largest city in the Roman Empire at 250,000 people, uh, second only to Rome itself and Alexandria in Egypt. And the church numbered multiple thousands. They met in homes and, and perhaps small business places all throughout the city. And so even to get this one letter to the church at Ephesus, you'd have to be passing it around to all sorts of different home fellowships and such. And, uh, and so it's a very orderly book. Uh, some people have divided it into two categories, uh, the doctrinal part and the everyday living part. Uh, Watchman Nee had the outline that I always like best, sit, walk, stand. First of all, Paul tells us that we sit in heavenly places. Then he tells us how to walk in this life in a way that pleases the Lord. And then he urges us to stand against the enemy, the principalities, powers, mights, and dominions that are resisting us in the spirit world. Um, an apostle of Christ by the will of God to the saints who are in Ephesus, faithful in Christ Jesus, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. This is a typical uh, Paul salutation. He says he identifies himself as Paul, an apostle. In the Greek, that means sent one. It's apostolos. And uh, by the way, I'll be referencing the Greek now and again because the New Testament was originally written in Greek. So sometimes it helps us to take a look at the Greek word and it just gives us a little bit more insight as we're studying God's word. Uh, an apostle means a sent one. It's the first of the five ministry gifts that are also listed here in the book of Ephesians. Apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. Apostle is a, a church planter. He stays just long enough to get uh, the new church that he, he, he plants a church, and then he stays just long enough to get it rooted and grounded, and then likely he moves on. Uh, a lot of people call themselves apostles today because they're pastors of pastors, they're kind of district superintendents. And uh, But the definition is a church planter, to go where no one else has gone before and to plant a church. And that's what the Apostle Paul did. Um, and by the way, don't glorify the offices of apostle and prophet. You know, someone comes up and says, Hi, I'm the, the prophet Bob. You know, and, and people say, oh, kiss my ring. 
you know, uh, uh, we're not supposed to. These are just job descriptions. An apostle is no greater than a pastor or a teacher. It's just a job description. And so the apostle, he's the, he's the one that comes first and plants the church. After that, the Bible says uh, prophets and, uh, and other ministries begin to minister in that church too. He's apostle by the will of God. Uh, no man takes any calling of God upon himself. <clears throat> God calls you. And uh, you may not have a vision like the apostle Paul had where you're caught into the third heaven. But you will know that you know that you know that you are called by God to the ministry that He's called you to. Uh, in my life, He has spoken so clearly that there was just no mistaking it. And a lot of times, I had resistance. People would say, "Why are you leaving this church and going to do that?" And uh, well, God told me to. I don't know what else I can do. I have to obey God. And so we don't take this on ourselves. So God sp speaks to us and shows us His will for us. And then He greets. Uh, the saints, to the saints who are at Ephesus, faithful in Christ Jesus. He, he prefers to call them saints, holy ones, and because that's who we are. Uh, if, if I told you I was Saint Kim and my wife was Saint Rebecca, you'd think we were kind of putting on airs or something. But uh, in the New Testament, that was the way Paul referred to the believers in the various churches. Saints, holy ones. That's what saints means ex Holy ones. Holy means set apart for God. And if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, you should be set apart for God. Set apart for His purposes. No longer can you just do what you want to do or do what others expect of you. You have to do what God wants you to do. You're set apart to do the work of the Lord. And uh, so he says to them, uh, you're faithful in Christ Jesus. They're hanging in there. They're believing. They're solidly planted. Grace and peace to you. The apostolic blessing or declaration over them. It both declares the fact you are uh, full of grace and peace. You have received this from God. And it powerfully imparts the, the hope of future grace and peace as well. Verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Every spiritual blessing, enough to meet every need. It's too bad a lot of believers today would rather have earthly blessings. And a lot of the teachers and, and television uh, uh, personalities emphasize the earthly blessings and and they're more popular than some of the guys who just stick with the word of God but uh, the word of God does give us earthly blessings but the condition is that we seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness then all these things shall be added to you you don't seek the earthly blessings you seek God and then he adds the other things to you, the, the taking care of your everyday life and, and prosperity and, and healing and the, the various things that uh, a lot of people major in. It's just a sideline to God. You serve me. I'll take care of all that other stuff. You put me first and I'll put you first too. Um, and, and again, if the majority of people are looking for physical blessings, earthly blessings, one thing the Bible teaches us the majority is almost always wrong. There's always a remnant that is really serving God and really doing the stuff the way the Lord would have it be done. And uh, and they're not usually the majority. They're usually the voice crying in the wilderness like Jeremiah or Isaiah or any of the prophets or even the Apostle Paul. Uh, he was uh, appreciated among the churches that he planted, but he was scorned by a lot of other people, even in the church in the first century. So we're, uh, we have every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. That's the origin of the best blessings. The heavenly realm, the spiritual realm. Um, but blessings that enhance our day-to-day -day life on earth as well. In the next several verses, Paul expounds on some of those blessings, and we're going to look at them. They're, they're not good for food or fancy cars, or mansions to live in, 
There are things that made our life possible. Redemption through the blood of Christ, uh, being adopted into the family of God and, and things like that. Those are blessings indeed. Those are blessings indeed. And we're going to pick up on them next week. Uh, earthly events are influenced by the spirit world. You read in Daniel that uh, he would get a visitation from Gabriel and Gabriel said, you know, I would have been here earlier, but I got sidelined. I got sidetracked by the prince of Persia. And finally, Michael came and helped me fight the prince of Persia. And as a result, I was able to bring this answer to prayer to you, Daniel. And he says, and now the prince of Greece is coming. And you know, the prince of Persia was the ruling spirit over the land of Persia. And Persia was the, the one world government, the, the ruling power throughout the Mideast in that time. But shortly thereafter, Alexander the Great came from Greece and took over the entire Mideast all the way over to uh, India or what is today uh, Pakistan. And so what happens in the heavenlies is reflected very often as to what is happening politically and in other areas to our life on earth. So it'd be, uh, be wise for us to understand a little bit more about that spiritual realm. And this is the book to look for it in the book of Ephesians. You don't always see what's happening in the spirit realm, but it's real. And it's, it is in many ways more real than what's happening on earth. The spirit is eternal. The flesh the, the earthly things are temporary. I want to live for the things that are eternal, things that will be with me forever, not things that I'll dump when I go to heaven. I'm not going to be able to bring my truck to heaven. And, uh, you know, not even my guitar. How sad. But I want to live for the spiritual things, things that are eternal. And when you seek first the spiritual things, the kingdom of God and his righteousness, you'll be rewarded with even more spiritual blessings. And the earthly things will be added to you when you put him first. God bless.